LeBron James is now so famous that when he goes on vacation to tropical places, he just stays on a mega yacht. Oh, yeah. So people can't take photos of him that he unless he wants them to. Unless he gets off the yacht. It's pretty cool. What a boring life that would be. I'm sure it is actually pretty boring. Yeah. He is the most recognizable, one of the most recognizable. Yeah, it just means you can't actually live the complete human existence anymore because you just can't participate. Because your life is just... That actually probably sucks. You could probably pay to go to space. That's true. That's true. Which is, I think you would, I think you could argue that that is the most meta human existence you could have. You could hang out with Richard. You hang out with Lord British. He's not still up there, right? <laughs> he just lived there now. <laughs> they just forgot about him. They brought him up there, and then they were like, yeah, okay, everybody count off. We're going back to Earth. For like a <laughs> hundred years. <laughs> Richard! <laughs> Richard, no. July 8th, 2015. This is Idle Thumbs 218. I'm Sean Vanneman. I'm Danielle Riendo. And I'm Jake Rodkin. Uh, and Chris Ramo is on assignment. Yes. Hi, Chris. We miss you very much. Always. Uh, guys. Yeah. I haven't been here in a minute. No, welcome no. back. Welcome to this room. You guys have been doing a good job, though. Podcast has been really good. Oh, do you listen to them when you're not on? I kind of blip and blop through them. Sure, sure. You know? You guys talked about a lot of games. I haven't played her story yet, but I really, really want to play you it. Should. Yeah. Buck, we promised we didn't promise. We raised the possibility of her story spoiler talk this week, but I feel like without Ramo, it's dumb. Well, to- I'm totally fine delaying that one week. Yeah. It gives me a full a full week. I wanted to-, to I wanted to mention it right at the top of the episode because yes. when we mentioned last week, let's do a her story spoiler section. I was sort of I came across a barrage of Oh, you're just gonna just gonna mention that, and not gonna do it. So we have to do it, but it's next week. So anyway, okay. Um, okay. That's the that's the mystery of her story revealed. Thanks everyone. Sorry for spoiling. <laughs> that is the true mystery. When we will talk about it. Yes. I have been very much wanting to play. Okay. So, did you guys ever play Super Mario Strikers? Yes. Okay. This is kind of there's something in the ether, or at least I'm just connecting dots of games that remind me of that, that are in vogue right this very second. Specifically, they remind you of Super Mario Strikers. Yes. Because well, Mario Strikers and, like, and Mario Tennis, they're, they're even close relatives in a lot of ways, but not in this case. No, so somebody... D- okay, sorry. I mean, I'm people, only going to say the word Dota a couple should times. Should we tell people Mario Strikers is a soccer, sports action, yeah. you know, kind of game? Mario-style, goofy sports game. For the GameCube? Yes. Yeah. And But it, it's like a really kinetic fast paced responsive like nintendo bar of quality yes. arcade soccer game yes. um not dissimilar they kind of had a that was an there was an era of like mario just golf and, mario sports yeah. games mario tennis and strikers were the closest to me where it's sort of the court or field is a little bit smaller and the ball kind of goes on fire and does crazy like it has charge moves kind of like mario kart or something it, it, yeah. uh, Strikers felt a lot like the NES classic ice hockey. You know, it kind of had the heavy yeah, light and, yeah. and you know, mm-hmm. medium characters, that sort of thing. It had the same flow a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, those have, yeah. like, always been my favorite type of... Yeah. Not my favorite type of sports games, but I've always had a really big affinity for those. But, um, so, Dota has... They're in this big transition phase of Dota, where they're taking Dota from Source 1 and moving it to Source 2, but then also redoing all of the ui just the all of the front end um all of them even that it seems like a lot of the matchmaking stuff and then also giving full mod like tools out and having a like mod storefront where you can just be like give me that give me that give me that give me that install it let's play it and it's really buggy and wonky right now because all that stuff is hosted on the like there, there's no dedicated servers. It's hosted, you know, on your machine. But somebody made a thing called Dota Strikers uh-huh. that I have only played a little bit of because there's been a really like a a really 
uh, not strong uh, server connection. Sure. But it's great. It's so good. It's just simple and arcadey and uses. But you it can leverage all or the... whatever? Yeah. I mean, though, well, there's like <laughs> nice. a handful of like 20 <laughs> characters that have uh, four basic abilities. You don't have to know all the crazy Dota rules. You just know how to play, how to play soccer and kind of how to play Warcraft. So it's pretty. Wait, it, play, it plays kind of like soccer, but you're still doing the, like the Warcraft click to move guys around. Yeah, and yeah stuff? of course. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's good. really good. Mods. Um, it's it's cool. <laughs> it's really really cool. It's really fun. I don't know how much. I don't know if I have uh, staying power because it's like an, a mod in its earliest days, but it's really really cool. Valve announces Strikers Two <laughs> 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 with Mario. <laughs> In a, in a weird twist, Blizzard is going to somehow swoop the the Strikers mod team. Well, it's only a matter of time. Strikers two from you, Blizzard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Heroes of the Strikers two. Yeah, exactly. Anytime now. Called Home of the Strikers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but it's cool. It's it's really 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 awesome. And then there's a game on Steam right now that I haven't played, but it's called Rocket League, mm. which. I have spent all day obsessing over, which is uh, soccer, but car, but you're driving cars <laughs> in these crazy like. Does know, that make it more like? Does arenas? it make it more like like car polo? Yeah, yeah, but it's big arenas and lots of powers and arcade to, to the fucking futuristic max. And now, so what that has done is. It's actually fine with Dota because I know a bunch of people who all have the same TeamSpeak login. So that's become a part of my social group, which is just logging into TeamSpeak. And I can be like, oh, who's in this room? And you can see everybody in there chatting. And it's like enough people to where it feels. You know, it's pick feeling, up soccer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it just laments the fact that like I don't have friends who come over to play video games. Like oh, ever. Yeah. Your Wii U has been sitting in a bag in my foyer for like. <laughs> three months just waiting for you to come pick it up that's only half my problem <laughs> the other half is that it's not just plugged in being loved that's a- true. At your oh. house no one is loving this Wii U yeah it's right sad Wii U it's just starving that is bag. really sad because there's there's quite a few cool games on there right well, now I know because I was going to say Splatoon yes. so now Splatoon is getting oh, like it's, it's been updated right yeah it just it just got a new game mode right okay so that was where I was going to go with this is like there's all these games that are like get your friends together and have fun and I just my life is not set up that way. <laughs> There's nothing about my life that is set up that way anymore. I come here, I work till I grow 15 more gray hairs, <laughs> and then I go home alone, <laughs> where I live alone, and that's it. And that's and repeat. You, you play some Dota, maybe. And like on the Saturday, know? Saturday comes, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna do the crossword, I'm gonna have a coffee, I'm gonna ride my bike, I'm gonna like whatever. Be person. There's yeah. no like. And then my pals are coming over to play. I mean, it means I'm an adult, but, but, but my yeah, life but is not sad. structured around yeah. the ability to do this without it being an event. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. You know what I mean? There's no like. Just, yeah. I have. You, I do have parties with my friends every month or so. And we friends. have a game night <laughs> party, and it's really lovely. And I'm, you know, yeah. it's a big part of my life. But I understand what you're saying because you know I have a. a live-in girlfriend that I play games with all the time. But before that, I, you know, I didn't have this for like six or seven years. And it made me really sad to not have like friends I can play video games with on the couch and, you know, be a, be a kid again well, a little bit. There's also yeah. that feeling where you don't want to be the person who wants it too bad. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to be the desperate. Have, you don't want them to leave in your eyes. You know I mean, I'm um, nothing. Erase me. <laughs> or <laughs> delete me. <laughs> delete me. <laughs> or it's like, oh. or like your boyfriend or your girlfriend's over and you're like, hey, like there's this really fun game I think we should play together. And then they start playing and they're like, I don't know, this isn't that fun. And you're like, it is though, it is. Just give it a second. Just give it a second. Just give it a second. It gets yeah. good four hours in. Just give it a second. It gets good at 13 hours. You know, okay, like, well, you, don't want it to, you don't want to want it too bad. But I want it so bad. This is San Francisco, yeah. the land of startups. It's also the land of man children. Right. Like, okay. Boys wow, are, you're playing, you playing in my hand lot. here. You got so, a lot going on here. This is the perfect opportunity for a new startup called Doorbell, where you have an app on your phone <gasps> that you can just go and it goes boop, boop. And then it's your friend wanting to come over and play at your house. You know. You're you. saying you're saying this in jest. You 
Bill, we should just I'm throw listening. Why Combinator? Thing. Where's my five hundred thousand dollars? Can we bleep some of those things and then just build this on the side? <laughs> I'm serious. Let's just build it. Uh, let's Who's just build notes? it. Who's taking sure. notes here? Confirm. Building it. We have we have the power. It's we already, have all these computers. It's all these... Copyright Idle Thumbs LLC. Done. Okay. Um, just so you know, Daniel, anything you say on this podcast, we own. Um, <laughs> You can tell That's your true. overlords over there. That's true. You can tell, yeah. Which overlord today do I serve? Um, yeah. It's <laughs> <Over, laughs> a good idea. I don't even say their names. This is real talk podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no one has friends except Danielle. I, well, you know. Do you hang out with anybody in Oakland? I, no? I hang out with some, like. You hang out with your cats and, and your girlfriend. And, like, there's a couple telltale people over there who I get drinks with occasionally, but, like, no one comes over to my apartment to play video games. I try to hang out with Nick. We live 10 blocks away from each other. <laughs> That's impossible. That's Nick Brecken, whatever. Yeah, yeah that's um, like trying to hang out with the president. Let's be honest. It's, <laughs> it's Nick Brecken and Sean Vanneman. Therefore, it's just, you, it's you two. I commit. Mm-hmm. I do see Brad Muir, but like, it's hard to get, he's got sure. a little baby. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about a video game? I wanted to, okay. I was just going to talk I more heard, about life. I heard that, I heard <laughs> in the middle of this conversation that there is new business in Splatoon and I want to hear about yes. that. And then I want to talk about Valve platform stuff when talking about Dota because there's a lot of Valve meta business occurring right now. <laughs> As there always is, which is my favorite. Oh, thing Valve to talk is, about. yeah. There's all sorts of stuff going on. They're just, oh, just moving and shaking and painting stuff the Valve with pink cast. hearts on it and stuff. Um, yeah. So there's a new mode in Splatoon. It's like a tower defense ish mode, sort of. And there was also a big Splatoon like festival on the 4th of July. Like it was like a big Nintendo led. Splatoon fest. Wait, inside of, of Splatoon? Inside of Splatoon. That's fucking cool. Was it, it like was, Splatoon, it cool. but it was just blasting Sousa marches and everyone had red and blue <laughs> ink? I don't think so. That I didn't, was, I didn't play it. I My want. girlfriend was on that beat. <laughs> but um, it, it, it's just cool. I mean, like, have you have you played this game? No, I think I'm just going to fucking do it. I think I'm just going to yeah. go to GameStop on my way home it's, and just plug in Jake's Wii U and say, it's, it's just so me. good. You yeah. also really don't need, I mean, yes, you could play that game with friends, but it actually works fairly well online. Like it it's has, actually it has it, drop in multi. Yeah, right? it has drop in multi okay. online. And, you know, the way I, I don't play even it, believe you because like I've been a Nintendo I know, that's customer the whole for thing so with long, Nintendo, but like, yeah. I don't even believe you. It's like you're saying it's, it. And I'm like, I'm sure it's great. It's their first, you know, I'm glad that on the on the Wii U, it seems like Nintendo is actually treating their games as living entities yes. the way that like PC and other console developers have for a while. Like it seemed like there was, there's updates to Mario Kart all the time. There's updates to smash brothers yeah. at least sometimes Splatoon. But a new Splatoon game mode makes me excited to hear like that. Actually, that game is so good. We haven't really talked about it much on the podcast. My girlfriend was ob- absolutely obsessed with it for a while. Like it, they get new gear, you know, at midnight, every, every midnight there's new gear, you know, that you can, and it all has an actual gameplay effect. Like this boosts your whatever, this boosts your speed, this boosts your something or other. She, every single night at midnight, she's like, can I check Splatoon? If I'm playing something else, we've got to switch, you know, check over to Splatoon Wii U. She's got to oh check that God. Splatoon drop. Like she was obsessed. She's not oh, yeah. quite as yeah, obsessed. No, no, I get it. Right now, but she, you know, for like a, a good month, it was, she played like three to four hours a day and had to check at midnight. She was like in it to win it. And I really enjoy the game as well. And I feel like we didn't talk about it much on the podcast, but like it really feels good to play that game. And it feels different from any other shooter. It's it's much more about movement. It's much more about, you know, no, looks- you turn into the paint and you kind of like mm-hmm. swoop around as a, as a squid and then you kind of pop back up and you have your little weapons and it's it's really really fun and i even really like the the single player mode it feels like jet grind radio just sort of running around splattering paint on things so. yeah no it, i i've been in lieu of like cause we're making a game oh yeah i just watch a lot of games now on my sure. computer to my left and i've watched a, a good chunk of splatoon <laughs> sure and it looks so fluid it is i know you're like yeah. that's a word to use because like you're spraying paint right, all right. Right. but like <laughs> it looks oh it just has that certain yeah. feel i kind of like i played the plants vs zombies um garden warfare yeah, yeah. because I, I don't know i like i like games that like this cute I, yeah it's but not a bad it, game it, it it was plotting in the way i'm plotting i mean it was like 2ds mm-hmm. the way i i, I didn't mind it because i actually liked like gears of war is very like plotting and how you move around the map yeah. But it seems like Splatoon has a lot of the things I like about those games, which is just map control and advantageous yes. positions. But 
is like a Tony Hawk game or something. Absolutely. Not as fast, yeah. obviously, as that, but has. It feels yeah. that way sometimes when you're really moving, when you're really because like, you're building up speed when you're in the in the ink. And if you're going downhill, or you're going down platforms or, or things like that. There are times you're flying through the air. I mean, it actually feels like. Yeah, I would compare it to like my first comparison is Jet Grind Radio, which is a game I loved back in the Dreamcast era. But also a Tony Hawk game or a, God, what was that other, what was the rollerblading game that's not Jet Grind Radio, but from that era, like a, whatever it was, it doesn't even matter. Um, it, it feels like that. It was like an extreme sports Tony Hawk ripoff rollerblading yeah. game. It's okay. Like I know PS2 that it exists, era, but I can't remember he, what it is. Whatever, sure. it's fine. It, it, it's all kind of in that vein. And I miss those games so much. When they were done well, it just, nothing <laughs> in the world felt like playing that. Like that sense of momentum, that sense of like speed, the sense of like, I'm doing cool tricks. And obviously in this one, you're not doing cool tricks. You are splattering paint and, you know, you know, whatever. You're not killing your enemies because this is a friendly, right. happy game where you don't kill things. But. Do you know anything more? You don't know anything more about the 4th of July event? You know, there was one. I, I will text because my girlfriend. It right really now. makes a ton <laughs> of sense. Like the, the cult of Nintendo has become something that's like yes. real, like very real, but not in the 15 years ago in opposition to something else, right? Yes. So it was like you're either like Nintendo or PlayStation or your Nintendo or Sega. It just feels like the industry is big enough now. Jake and I, you and I were talking about this at E3 a little bit or on the way back. We talked about it on a podcast episode, actually. We talked about the Nintendo. Yeah, and just the Nintendo, like the industry is so like diverse and large now that they can just have this really fervent base that's not defined as an opposition to anything. Mm -hmm. and it's why it's why it's it's interesting. I like that they're using events to keep that stuff. Seeing going. them do a lot of the same stuff that seems like I mean I know a lot of games do this stuff, but like it it reminds me of Valve in a lot of ways. Yeah, just seeing Nintendo do it across an entire platform as opposed to just like it's only in Call of Duty or it's only in Gears or sort of just Nintendo seems like their sort of big platform games on Wii U are being run increasingly like Valve games as far as the way their community stuff works. Sorry, just throwing phone around. It's okay. Um, but Did you want to talk about speaking of Valve? Well, uh, there's a uh, yeah, there's good a, seg, good seg. No, Jake is no. There's like there's like four billion things going on with Valve. Like I, uh, so I guess it's Valve time. Get it, get it, Valve time. Um, uh, oh. No, well, just first the fact that they're migrating Dota from Source One to Source Two is about the most amazing thing that I have ever heard. Because it's running I, two, two who, games concurrently. Yeah, it, it seems so yeah. like Dota and Dota 2 Reborn. Yeah, because I mean, Valve is like sort of coined game as service and talking about their games as platforms. And I don't think anyone is committed to that to this degree ever. Like, I mean, e like MMOs even, which are like the epitome, like the classic model of a game as service. They're never going to actually like rewrite their game engine. No, War of Warcraft them. is not going to go back. Hey guys, it's been ten years. We're rolling no, you like, slowly over to <laughs> yeah, but like rolling Warcraft rolling to Source Two. That's like just if your game is a service, this is like upgrading the operating system with all your users still using it. It's crazy to me. Like, I, like I've I've yeah, nothing like to say about that. Sending out new hardware to everyone. Yeah, and being yeah, like, guys, yeah, put this crazy, on your fucking house. Crazy <laughs> game firmware update. It's it's like I don't have anything to say about that other than just. The fact that it's only kind of noticeable to the outside world is crazy. The, the real strange thing about it, and I wish somebody else played the game to talk to about this. You do have a whole podcast you could be dedicated. I to could. This. If you I choose could do to that. spin it I up. could do that. But the thing I'll <laughs> share with you guys that I think you will find at least academically interesting is that because the game, like, they re, they're, they're building the game and rendering the game from the ground up on a completely different code. But this is a real if you think about this as a challenge, like just a whole new engine, but they need to recreate the other games feel perfectly. Here's the thing. They yeah. did it before, but it's they haven't done it yet. No, like, they did it when they brought Dota to Dota 2. They had no, to no, make, no, 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 no. Because like I'm sure where they started was but let's get the timings right. The exact. I mean, no, because there's a lot of that. There's everybody talks about there being a bit like. There's a big jump. Like there's a big sort of feel jump between those two. Um big, 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 big. Because so I'm much of like, like I'm talking about Dota one to 
Dota 2 version 0. 0.5 yeah. internal. Like, anyway. Sure, 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 sure. But, but now mean, it's like it has to just, the competitive scene has to be able to just seamlessly move over. Right. And not have yeah. to like relearn all these timings. And I play it. It looks better. It looks fucking amazing. It just looks like my, I got a better, it looks like I got a better computer. It's the best <laughs> way to describe it. It's <laughs> like, it looks like I upgraded my piece of shit. Um, but it just feels like I've had a couple drinks or something and like things are a little <laughs> quite and I'm not I'm not as sharp. It's very strange. There are obviously some a lot of bugs they're working out. They have a fuckload of bugs to work out still. But um it's so it's such a weird like problem to have to solve when everything is more efficient and looks better. Like that means that like the striking animation by this one character, which is incredibly well rendered, beautifully animated. Like if you zoom in with on a high res, uh, like model of this sure, character, it's like a fighting game. It looks the, like a fucking Pixar. If movie. the pose yeah, doesn't sure. match exactly with the same frame as the old one, it feels different, and, the, and you can't yeah. do your yeah. gameplay correctly. Yeah, yeah, it's really like. I bet it's a not exciting thing. It's, to be I was actually on. I was actually <laughs> thinking about that. Um, when Nintendo was showing off Mario Maker at E3, oh, yeah. because oh, Mario Maker, yeah, that's a great example. Because actually. Mario Maker has Mario One, Three, World, and New Super Mario Brothers level design tools all running inside of the editor, and it seems from the demo like it's more than a palette swap. Like it seems like the physics and the player control suite actually comes across. So you lay out the same tiles, and then it's like, boop! I'm in New Super Mario Brothers now, so Mario can just wall jump and do backflips and stuff. And it plays like new Super Mario. Boop! I'm in Mario One, and he jumps with the same physics as the NES. Like, I, yeah, that's no, that's, that's very similar. That's a very similar yeah, sort it's, of situation. It's, it's interesting to me. Yeah, uh, I mean, and I'm sure Mario Maker does not have to have the same level of like to the like down to the metal emulated purity that Dota Two is going it to have. Probably to have, does though, but, because like if you get that Mario One feeling wrong. Yeah, you want to be knows. you want to be able to build Mario One One in Mario Maker and play it through and frame for frame and be right, like yeah. Mario Champion and go yeah that's it it's Mario One <laughs> yeah um, I don't know it's interesting but the the other big old Valve thing is Team Fortress Two finally got a big old update and twist it's not the new game mode they announced it's just a bunch of crazy meta stuff that makes your guns look weird <laughs> have gun you looked, skins have you looked at this Danielle it's not quite gun skins it's- okay so. Yeah. When it first was announced, I was just like, oh, they're literally just ripping off the stuff in CSGO. And I was actually really upset by that because I hate that stuff. It does have. Gotta love gun skins, like, bro. It doesn't have. It's not gun skins. I know. It's not, which is. it's the, What is it? So it, it does start with a lot of that same idea of you can have a completely unique weapon that looks unlike anyone else's, which is a big thing in CSGO. Everyone wants to have gun skins. And you can do the thing where you press a button and your character in first person examines how cool the gun is and. <laughs> Whatever, whatever the hell else, just shout off your gun to yourself. But it's, <laughs> it feels more in line with the Team Fortress uh, Man vs. Machine type thing where the game is free to play. But then if you buy, man, what's the name of this update? It's the Gun Metal update. It's called Gun, the Gun Metal update. Yes. Yeah. M E T T L E. So you pay six bucks and then you get, in, you get added into a like multi month long campaign of like tiny missions which feel like um they're like a set of mini achievements or they feel like they're like a themed version of like a lot of ios games have started doing like a bingo card where they'll just give you a bunch of challenges that you have to complete and then once that's checked off that bingo card is gone so like you know complete the game with exactly 500 points or or whatever uh is like a you know and you kill the spy three times yeah exactly so like the example that they give is Get a kill as a spy, score score two capture points as a spy, get a backstab or whatever. Uh, and then once you complete all of these, your spy contract is complete. And as you complete these contracts, you get guns that are one of a kind guns. But it appears that it's the game itself and the community have done a weird ass thing where it looks like it random rolls you a texture for your gun. Hmm. Where like there's a sort of suite of wallpapers that it can affix to your gun and then it kind of mushes them around to make a semi procedurally generated texture on your gun. And then it also applies a level of wear and tear. So like if you get, you can get one that looks like, like it's been in service for like five years or you get like a pristine or you or get like a pristine yeah. one. Yeah. You get a beat up piece of shit or you get like a mint, <laughs> a mint gun. Oh, what about mint colored gun? That I have no fun, idea. Probably. And there's probably, like that. There's probably a, exists. Mm. You can get probably like a, like a mint 
plaid. Oh, yeah. it's mint plaid. Yeah, it's, they say that it's given like a uniquely that. placed paint job. So I guess there's just textures <laughs> that it sort of just mo- mushes around. It's it's so it's strange to me. It's less off putting than I thought because all of the rules of it put it in the same kind of. It still feels like TF. It's, it's the TF it's, version of it where there's sort of you get yeah. this wacky challenge and then it gives you a gun as opposed to just like straight up open this crate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and all the guns that are part of the gunmetal campaign seem to have a little thing attached to them that show like because it has the weapon examine mode, but the gun also has an in-world counter on it that's showing your progress. So when you do the examine thing, you your character holds uh, the number up to the screen so you can see how far you are. It's just an in-world thing, which is a good touch. Like, they put a lot of yeah. effort into this. But if you go to When the, I saw that key art, I went, oh, no. That's the thing. Don't show this to Jake. <laughs> that's oh, the thing no. about it. If, you, if you go to the Team Fortress <laughs> website and go to the Gunmetal update page... It, it, and you're a person who loved Team Fortress from like from TF2 and when the orange box came out. It is literally just a picture of all of the things that are bad about modern <laughs> Team Fortress. It's just that uh, the Miss uh, Paula Pauline character, whatever from the comics, who shows up in like the short films they put out now, sitting in a room with just like a rainbow array. It just of looks c- like the latest Nerf collection, yeah. like <laughs> it's just, from Toys R Us. Oh man. And then you go back, like, if you look at that image and how insane it is, and then look at the, like, community recommended Valve guidelines for how to create a Team Fortress asset, which is still the same stuff they've always published, where it's, like, um, a slowly lightening color palette from gray to the color of your character, uh, or uh, with with red and blue highlights, and these are the colors you should use. (laughs) For the readers at home, sorry, I'm just... Jake's (laughs) arms went full... Like a emo- like emoticon shrug man, <laughs> and then his eyes got big and he shook his head and he was actually speechless. It's just oh, it's they've now just created <laughs> the weird like dysfunctional <laughs> bureaucratic government where it's just like this is the rules everyone should obey. Speaking of defunct governments, and yeah, Valve. A- oh, exactly. Oh. <laughs> I, say, I bet this was this is it. This is the this last is thing why. that guy did before he went this into is why. Greece. This yeah. is what happened. Giannis, this is his last thing. This was Giannis' was last Greece. move. Was <laughs> yeah. You know he's out, right? Yeah, yeah. He's done. Oh, he's done. I know. He's yeah. done with everything. No, he, he's Greece gonna. He's gonna like, have a bike security is, shop next. He, yeah. He's like, I'm. This is all right. He's goodbye. He was running. I tried. He was running. Uh, his his sort of small financial model for how Greece should work was actually the gunmetal update, and it turned out that. <laughs> Coincidence that the gunmetal update was the same day as Giannis Varouskis leaving oh his 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 post as uh, finance minister. Getting yeah, on Giannis's his- Greece votes no on austerity. <laughs> yes to gun skins with shitty blue wallpaper on them. <laughs> Getting on his CB nine hundred motorcycle and riding yeah. into the Greek hills. Anyway, I I didn't even I got into this way more than I wanted to on this episode because I actually want to play it and see what it is. No, I have to. We, I'll. <gasps> You full guys circle. should have no, full segment you should have circle. A party together. Jake, I don't I'll, give team, I don't I'll give you the team. Spe- I'll give you the team speak login. Oh, we're now that we're saying this on the podcast, it's never going to happen. <laughs> That's well, the way we do it here. Deflated. Thumbs just deflated yeah. right there. We should Please. stream it. Yes, you should. Please. No, see me saying this is just making Please, it less likely to play. You okay. should stream it together so you have a. You guys nice have to time. stop. You have to stop. <laughs> Please. Okay, Sean, for you. Oh, uh, that's a oh. Lie. that was that was a lie. That was Dad saying we're going to Disneyland. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe get, next maybe, year. Maybe if you get good grades. Maybe next year. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Who knows? No, we're going to Grandma's funeral. I was gonna say funeral. We're going to Disneyland. <laughs> that was too dark. <laughs> same trip, same place. <laughs> Two signs. One that says Epcot. One that says Grandma's funeral. <laughs> Probably at that really shitty rock and roll themed hotel. Oh, yeah. Disney World's got some shit hotels. Disney World has some some has some beautiful hotels. It's like the full spectrum, you know. It's got everything you could ever want. Yeah. Disney World. We talk about Disney World a lot on this podcast. We really do. Yeah. Um, do you guys want to take a break? Sure. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. What video game? This episode is brought to you by Zoom, a really, really nice video screen sharing group messaging platform. You can run it on pretty much any device, Mac, PC, iOS, Android. We used a bunch of different video conferencing solutions because at Campo Santo, which is a company that Sean, Chris and I work at making the game, uh, we have a bunch of people who don't work in the office. 
So we've gone through a lot of stuff and we've been using Zoom lately. It's Yeah, our setup is like we have a screen at the end of the at end of the room where people from like the UK and Canada or just your home apartment if you don't want to come in that day just pop up on a just screen. Just log in and your facials up on the TV and it's like you're in the broad, office. Yeah, and it's like you're in the office. Um Zoom, so I mean if you've used Skype or Hangout or something. Zoom operates in that sphere, but the quality is incredibly nice. Their interface is really good, and they have all sorts of features. I was actually you set your phone up to AirPlay, which is what it can share its screen out to your Macintosh computer, and the Zoom app can pick that up. You can just say, "Oh, here's what's on my iPhone," and you can literally just launch whatever you want and That's just cool. stream out your iPhone screen to people. The other thing that they do is um, they have a variety of different video codecs. So if you're in a call or a group chat with someone and you want to just stream a chunk of a game or a live video, you can switch to the optimized for like live full screen YouTube codec and then it will just give people a not choppy weird version of it. Like it just it they've got a lot of like just nice detailed features like that. It's cool. You go to zoom.us slash thumbs and you can get a free account but their like free tier is like a legit it's great tier. yeah yeah go to, it's so a real you, solution if you go to zoom.us slash thumbs get a free account uh check it out thanks, thanks zoom Video this episode is also brought to us by a longtime sponsor of the podcast nature box oh Ooh. man our old buddies <laughs> yeah. nature box takes it you really gotta hang around with idle thumbs to get when you say the name of a product, so everybody goes, "Oh yeah, yeah, Nature Box is coming over. They're all friends. Right. Play some Splatoon. Yeah, they're gonna have some buddies. <laughs> they brought their nom noms. Yeah, play Splatoon. <laughs> Eat your Big Island pineapples, just yeah. like being a kid again. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, by, if you don't know what Nature Box is, it's a home or office snack delivery service. You can choose from over a hundred uh, various uh, savory and sweet snacks made with high quality ingredients. They'll deliver a box of them to your house. And you can eat them, and they're really good. They're real good snacks. Yeah, they go to nature, send them to you. Naturebox.com slash thumbs. Just type in that address, tell them where to ship you food, and they will just send you food right now. So that's what you want. You want to if try you're really hungry deal. right now. That's a good deal. But you think you'll be, therefore, you'll be hungrier when the food arrives. So just do <laughs> it. That's true. You're not going to get less hungry. Yeah. That's impossible. That doesn't uh, work that way. We, yeah, we've eaten a lot of Naturebox in this office thanks to them sponsoring the show. And Naturebox, we'd like to eat more. Just so yeah. you know. Always. Yeah. We always want to eat more. Our doors are always open. <laughs> to your boxes. <laughs> you just walk in. <laughs> you just walk into our office. Yeah, have a look around. No. Um, leave a box or <laughs> leave not. Leave a whole box. <laughs> it's a bunch of really tasty snacks. So go to naturebox.com slash thumbs and eat a bunch of delicious snacks. Video game. It's worth oh, pointing no. out that our door is not open. It's locked. We dead bolt. Yes. We dead bolt it. We have some really. But good it would se- be open for Nature Box. Is it's what we're saying. Metaphorically yes. open, but Metaphorical we have a really good security We have a system. separate doorbell labeled Nature Box, <laughs> just for them. <laughs> and it goes when you ring it. It's a little doggy door just for Nature Box. That's better. What Danielle says better. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, thanks, Nature Box. Nature Box will send a dog to your house <laughs> with their snacks. An adorable puppy. No, it's with like a, a box Saint around its little neck. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. right. <laughs> so you're trapped in your office, and maybe the pile of paperwork <laughs> that comes to you. The That's dog the nature is box ad from like 1992. I love it yeah. on television yeah. when the Saint Bernard shows up with the nature box around its neck. Yeah, the ABC, next, you're, tr- you're ABC trapped family. in an avalanche yeah. of, of paperwork. Yeah, no, for sure, it's it's wedged between like Beethoven, uh, like a um, I'm Dave Wendy's ad and like a York peppermint patty like snowstorm blows <laughs> through your office. Ad. Yes, yes, yeah, yep, exactly yeah ABC right. Family is a you know sitcom I'm glad you're right. kind yep. of thing. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's gorgeous. It is I, Lord Nature Box. <laughs> Man, people call people hipsters a lot now. They do. Have you notice that? Do people just call? Well, people have called each other hipsters. Too for many a while. hipsters in video game development. Well, yeah. So, well, that's when it's just code for a person who I don't like, who's probably liberal. Yeah. I and guess. when it's in video game development, when it's in San Francisco, it is a rich libertarian who's a chode. Yeah, well, it means a different like, thing yeah, depending on. Like if yes. you look at like the group of people who made, like, Gone Home. No, I was gonna say like modernist film when it was just like. Oh yeah, they would be hipsters if they were around now. Yeah, but they like, even had the glasses. They were like a crew of of like of uh, contemporaries, and if you weren't, if you were, you know, in like their audience, it was okay that they were eclectic oh yeah i know i mean, basically just at this point socially connected it's people. just a word that means aloof a person who i think is aloof who i don't like yeah 
and yeah. is pro- probably dresses kind of nice. And thinks they're and cool. goes to camp. <laughs> goes to throws camp. a camp. Throws some sort of cool retreat. Um, <laughs> cool camp. Cool, cool kids camp. I played Dodo Pop on the iOS. Dodo Pop. Dodo, as in Dodo. Dodo word. Pop. I thought this was a yeah. It's a match di- it's three a, Dota game. No, it's a Disney like like pop the bubbles physics puzzle thing. Yeah. And as I was playing it, I got kind of. I don't know if this is a story for the podcast. We're in the break anyway. That's fine. I got I was like, man, this Dodo bird sounds like. I like the it's hilarious. Like it's, <laughs> this makes all these little like, yeah. you know, little high pitched noises. And I was like, I love this Dodo bird. Turns out the voice of the dodo bird is my sister. What? Yeah. The guy who what? did all of the audio engineer for Dodo Pop for the iOS game that Disney makes is a, my like lives in my sister's house <laughs> and was like, hey, do you want to like Do you want to be the just bird? Be this voice. <laughs> we got to get it done. That's amazing. Like, yeah, sure. Okay. Should, that should go on the podcast. So, That's great. Yeah, it's really funny. If you want to play Dodo Pop, when the Dodo goes, That's my, your my sister. Way. That's delightful. Yeah. It's Siobhan Vanneman. That's really that's really a nice story. I would love to play something, and it's my sister who made it. Yeah. Or, so or when, I, when I miss her, I just play that game. Oh. And it makes me feel closer to her. It doesn't. That's... But I did, I did find that I had a, like a weird affinity for this noise, that it was... You probably heard it at some point growing up. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Maybe when there I was would, some fondness associated. Whenever and I you were annoyed when, at the time. Whenever I would like, succeed ah, ah. in anything, she would make a little courageous mm. or yeah. celebratory. <laughs> yeah. And I would and I would smile. You would be excited. Okay. I have a couple yeah. emails that we can read. I played a cool game, you guys. You played a cool game. I played a cool game. Was it Cool Spot? Uh, no. Not this time. Was it the Cool in the Gang FMV game? No, not this time. On Laserdisc. Okay. <laughs> not this time. That, exi- that is exist. Well, I will uh, totally play that. I'll play both of those things. This is a game called Into the Stars. I, pl- I mean, I played an early build of it. It's uh, you know, it's from a very small studio. And Fugitive thank Games? You. Thank you. Thank you. Into the Stars. It is a space sim. It's wow. um, a little bit FTL, a little bit um, Star Control 2, actually, and a little bit um, general kind Whoa. of spacey mining sim kind of thing going on. You play as the captain of a starship who has, you know, control you. over you. You hire sort of six crew that all have different attributes. You know, some people are better engineers, some people have medical skills, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, whatever, sort of the usual thing. Uh, you have your six crew and you decide what resources you want, what kind of equipment you want on your ship, and then you set off and you are exploring the galaxy. You are going to planets, mining for resources, trying to help humanity survive because you have kind of an arc ship where humanity all lives on this ship and it's all down to you. Is there is there an end campaign or is it, in a game or is it a like survive as long as you can type situation? So far, I think it's survive as long as you can. It's also such an early build that I don't think everything has sort of been built out right. yet. Yeah, this game but, was on Steam Greenlight, it looks like. Yes, yeah. yeah it's, super, it's super, super early, but it has a ton of promise It's on so early far. access. It's off Greenlight. It okay, was so on there, Greenlight, though. Yeah, that's yes, what it yes, was. It that's was what it is. Greenlight. Yeah. Um, but it, it's really, really promising so far. Uh, I really kind it's, of love. It's beautiful looking you know, too. It looks it's crazy. gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a it's yeah. it's a fully three D situation, yes. right? It's yes. an Unreal Four engine game. It sure is. Holy you're you're actually flying, you know, and you have full control over your ship as you're flying through what? outer space, and then you you know you sort of tab in whenever there are, there's an emergency. You need to deal with this, and you sort of you know assign a crew member to it when you go to a planet. You can, uh, you know, send an away team. Basically, it's very, you know, Star Trek style. You send the away team. And then from there, you maybe will get little missions like, oh, there's a crazy AI on this abandoned starship. And, you know, depending on their stats, it's it's whatever percentage of success that you're likely to have. Oh, so that all happens sort of via like a console view of yeah, your away team or exactly. something? You get the, like, the, yeah. the, the predator the crew camera or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The or aliens, whatever camera. it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's basically like Jurassic that. World. Yeah, it's a very Jurassic World kind of touch, I would say. Um, it, See, it's just really to be clear, fun so I don't, far. I do not believe this game is on early access currently. Oh, okay. Well, I, like I said, I just got an early, early build. I know they're, I'm, yeah. they're... I'm looking... I'm, I'm sure putting it, it out uh, at some point, hopefully Gosh. in the future, if they're giving this it. This is one of those so. games where I don't really want to get that wrong because, like, it was on Greenlight, it right, got right. Greenlight. It 
They ran a little Kickstarter for it. It looks like they made a hundred grand. Like yes. well, these guys are definitely piecing this thing together. The, so I don't want to. The sell. Into the Stars sure, website sure. says on Steam, you go to their link and it says early access game release date June 9th, twenty fifteen. This game will unlock in approximately one day and thirteen hours, and it is not a green light situation. Huh? Huh? I can't. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll look at the app. I apologize for not knowing crazy. the entire. Crazy deal with it uh, from that point of view. But yeah, it's really, really promising. It's really cool that we're in a time where um, small team Unreal 4 games exist. <laughs> it's, like, isn't that awesome? Yeah, yeah, that was, I mean, obviously that time was going to come once they changed the um, licensing, yeah, totally. Yeah, once they changed the uh, the deal with that. Yeah, but it's, it's. I mean, you know, FTL, everybody likes FTL. Maybe Available not everybody. July 9th. But... Jake, you said June 9th. Oh, sorry. July <laughs> it unlocks. <laughs> basically, if you're listening to this podcast, it's probably ready to play early access. Yeah. So this is really fortuitous for them. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty um, rad. Yeah. Pretty rad. July 9th, 2015. It's going to go up on early access on Steam. And how much of it did you play? Uh, an hour and a half or so. And I and I played. I feel like I got a good a good sense of all the kind of missions and all the stuff that's going on in it and so on and so forth. There's also combat. Sorry. That's another whole huge chunk like of the game. Combat? Yeah, there's ship to ship combat, which I'm bad at, but it's awesome. You know, it's very much like the the Star Trek model, like do you go for the hull, the shields or the, you know, sort of right. um, and FTL weapons. Had that stuff in it yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. It's very it's very FTL in that in that sense, certainly. The thing that was nice about FTL is because of its art style and um how like restrained and reduced so much of it was your brain could fill in the gap. So it never felt like the game yeah. was repetitive or stale, even though you may be encountering sprites that were the exact same right. sprites. It was as abstract before. enough that it could have been the ship's readout or something. And then you just imagine whatever. Yeah. 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 But this game is like, it's a it game. looks like a, I mean, it visually it looks like a triple A game or something. Yeah. Like, it looks so very like a you, Star Trek polished kind of, you know, bridge yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And did you find interface. that it was in an hour and a half, like you were just starting to scratch away at a game that was there? Or were you starting yeah. to like re- have some of the same types of encounters and like you're like, oh, OK, this could. I mean, I, I failed in combat twice in that hour and a half. So I think it's more that I'm not good at it than it is that I wasn't really I'll sort of reaching. Short. Well, I'm, you know, I bet you're great. I'm a pretty good captain. But I don't know if I'm a great uh, master combat technician, <laughs> tactician mm-hmm. rather, uh, in this style of game. I, I felt like I was scratching at the surface. I certainly don't know necessarily. But, th- you know, there's a map in the game. And I had only seen like 10% of, of sort of the available galaxy in the early build. And after an hour and a half, like I feel like that's that's a good little chunk. Mm-hmm. But it's certainly not seeing everything. So, cool. yeah. Did, did you guys happened to see that 20 minute no man's sky video that ign yes. put up this week my god oh, no, i didn't see it. holy yeah. fucking shit yeah. yep. <laughs> it did it for you yep i still don't really know if there's any sort of overarching meta goal to no man's sky and i guess there is not but they yeah. showed it and i mean maybe there is who fucking knows and also <laughs> at this point i think i finally did cross the i don't care threshold yeah because ign uh, they recorded this at at, um, at E3 with, uh, and what's the name of the main Hello Games guy? Oh, Sean Murray. Sean Murray. Sean Murray, yeah. He sat down with IGN and played through what looks like about 20 minutes yeah. of No Man's Sky. And it's a lot of the same stuff that we've seen before for No Man's Sky, but it's just like the level of detail that you get to observe in that thing is high. And it sort of, it started to scratch at some of the rule set of of that game, like, the thing that stood out the most to me is that it has a GTA based or GTA style star system for how much of a butthole you are. Like, <laughs> yeah. like he like he was just wandering around a planet in this demo, and then a goat came up to him and he said, "Oh, I could shoot it, I guess, if I want, or I could scan, and identify it." And the IGN guy was like, "Shoot it!" He shot it, and he got a star. And then Sentry robots just started coming down from the sky, <laughs> and it's like, "Oh, this is a a race of self replicating AIs that are that have their own rules, uh, but they don't like it when you just kill indigenous life." And then he started shooting them and his star rating went up and up and up. And then like larger ships started just coming in and then he was just wrecked. And then he, when you're dead, your stars go away. And he's like, well, that that's the thing that will maybe keep some people in line. Or you can just be a crazy criminal like you can in GTA. Like It means you could play, you can do the I'm bored in GTA, but No Man's Sky version where you just are a fugitive. You're just a fugitive. You're a fugitive poacher murderer. From a, from a <laughs> bunch of AI robots. And then he, um, there was a trading post 
type of thing that just looks like a it looks like a large version of like the shield generator on Endor and Return mm-hmm. of the Jedi or something. Yeah. It's just like a couple platforms with big ships that land. Um, but he was doing like resource mining. Like there's just big sort of QB blocks of different colors, which become different, which are different elements, different like minerals that you mine that go into the no man's sky in universe fictional periodic table of elements. And then you can craft those into things and you can also trade them for value at trading posts and visit space stations that also have this sort of thing. Like, I don't think there's a lot of, I can't tell how much wandering around inside those is cause they didn't show it, but just like this game, there's just a lot more world in it than I like it, the, I can see now the, Oh, if you like the Minecraft esque appeal to it a little more, and it's not just literally, I feel like all I'd ever seen was just, you go boo and put the sonar ping out and then name a creature like that's all the stuff right you go showing. on space safari but it's actually like stuff. you yeah. Yeah. your ship is procedurally generated but there's different classes of ships so you can also get better more interesting ships you can you can classify species but you can also he said if you want you could probably live a life that is actually just trading inside of the in world like elements economy where you can actually just be a shipper and trader of stuff between bases without ever landing on a planet no one will do that but like you theoretically could do that. It seems like there's just a bunch of, like, it just is a weird living organism. But the thing that they did when you, sorry, I, I thought about this, Danielle, oh, yeah, because totally. you mentioned seeing the map in um, Into the Stars. In Into yes, the Stars. Yes. And the thing that that Sean Murray did in this video that made me lose my mind, and I'm sure you saw it too. I, yeah, yeah. Was basically what Will Wright did in the original Spore demo where he just said, anyway, we're on this planet. Anyway, that was just one planet inside of this Stars, or there was a planet yeah. and moons was the whole demo where he jumped between all these places and he said that's actually just in this solar system which is in this galaxy which yeah. is in and then it just looked like he did the, that in the in the uh yeah this was a way more extreme version of it because he just sat there going just soaring through space just galaxies and nebulas whipping by for like mm, a minute and then he's like and anyway this is the center of the galaxy which is where, oh, that is, there is a big meta thing that yeah, I completely forgot yeah. about. He said, this is the center of the galaxy, which is where everyone is trying to get. You all start at the edge of the known universe, and you're trying to get to the middle. And you can keep playing once you get to the middle. But once you do get to the middle, um, things happen that change your play experience. And then someone said, yeah. what is in the middle of it? And then he amazingly, in the IGN video, just said, Peter Molyneux. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, That's oh. right. Uh, which is like the most self-aware answer you can make if you literally say our meta universe of uh, of No Man's Sky is curiosity. What's inside the cube? We're like everyone's just trying to get to the middle of it, and when you get there, something that changes your experience it's will be face. there. What's in there, Peter Ball? You, <laughs> but uh, oh, it's beautiful. But, yeah, yeah, I'm glad to hear that there is actually a goal, which is that you can, if you desire, be exploring from whatever your random roll start point is of your character towards the center of the galaxy, and that there is What's some great specific is that content just means there. That like when people. When this game goes live on PSN, it is just going to literally be race to the galaxy. I know, like, oh, race to yeah. the center just of the like, fucking universe. Enough, yeah, man. Just that yeah. that twenty minute video. Like, finally, I was like, okay, I understand now. Like, because I had been wondering. I really hope our game is done when this game comes out, so I can just race to the middle <laughs> of this fucking universe. <laughs> I know. So you're like, guys, I'm taking a week I'm off. Done. I'm, I'll be yeah. on the screen on the Zoom. This <laughs> going. I don't know. Like, it, it had all the same stuff that we've been seeing, but just seeing it in a contiguous demo. It, it, like it that. had much more context in this, you yeah. know, in this demo. I, I also, I have to say, maybe this makes me a bad person. I don't know, but well, we this all, is, we, this is what we've all been thinking. We all, we all know. We all know I'm a bad person. No, no, not a bad person, but the exact same instinct that led me to get high and 360 no scope the eagle in far cry 4 makes me really want to play 360 this game. no scope the eagle is a different is a slang <laughs> for a different drug it is you're right i just okay i just i'm just gonna say it this feels like this game it, it's going to be many things for many people among those things that it might be is a stoner's paradise to just see all the pretty colors in millions of worlds oh, for sure. and just like hang out and chill and there's pretty birds going by and that's I don't I don't even here. think that I think you're just right. like real just like real life sure like, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's fair to <laughs> say that really that's a stoner's paradise she cut her hair and she's become like Wanyel. I'm a different person. Like, yeah. I'm Wanyel. Like, yeah. Hello, I'm Wanyel <laughs> Ariendo. <Yeah. laughs> um, I think that just like. The fact that it has all this other stuff going on is actually the thing that has allowed me to appreciate the fact that it is also just a sci-fi version of Space Engine. Yeah. Where it's just right. like, yeah. you can just 
float out. Like there was a moment in the demo where he left the atmosphere, which is impressive because it looks like a hyperspace jump from Battlestar Galactica or something. But then he stopped and just spun around and it had the sci-fi thing where just the moons are like five times closer than they should be. So there's just like a world full of, or just this, this space Moon is just sky. full of these huge, yeah. beautiful, unique looking planets. And he just sort of spun around for a second. It's like, okay, knowing that that is not all that the game is, but that you can just choose to like just chill out and just look at amazing space or just look at weird pastoral nature scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, I hate it. I hate it because I, I want to play it. <laughs> I hate it because I love it. Because I have to buy a PlayStation 4. <sighs> yeah, you should do that. <laughs> Maybe you should have you one should of those. You should probably do that. <laughs> Maybe you <laughs> should uh, have one of those. I, yeah. I, really, I do need one really bad. Um, <laughs> I think you just actually are like really in breach of contract now for you saying that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's might fine. Be, it might be possible. Yeah. Uh. So the uh, the game before we talked about No Man's Sky, it was called Into the Stars. It goes up on early access in a, like now if you're listening. Uh, yeah. Yes, today. If I not think. right this second yeah. while you hear my voice, it's gonna have like a nine hour counter maybe. Yeah, yeah. It, It'll be around soon for early access. Yeah, and also jumping from Into the Stars to No Man's Sky, I didn't mean to like compare the two. To, I did. Yeah. yeah, I did not actually mean to compare the two because looking at them, they seem like very, very, very different oh, yes. games that happen to both be in space. Yes. Um, but yeah. But both are probably, at least from what I've played, this is definitely worth a look. And No Man's Sky, I'm, I just want to play it and look I got pretty so, space. I got so fucking hyped for No Man's Sky from that video. I, I did, did not too. expect that I, I had, would. I had a, bu- I had a, a, I had a buzz. I had a, a level of hype, a low level of hype kind of going on already. Well, now, would you say you are so hyped now? No, I'm, I'm a bit so hype. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I, perhaps I'm, I've gone into so hype territory. I'm not so hyped, but that's not possible Sorry, for me. Yeah. High I, five. I didn't mean to. We're doing a high five with our shoes. Our suits, yeah. <laughs> Jake doesn't really get hyped about things. No, he, does, he does. It's just. He gets enthusiastic. He yeah, gets yeah, you're right. like a boy. It's, there's there's excitement. He doesn't get fucking hype. Like, sure, I don't sure. know what that I is. Understand. I don't know what that is either. I really actually think that Star Wars The Phantom Menace killed my inner hype. I believe I know, that. I do, maybe I that's a that. thing. It's a generational thing. Like, people who are able to get really hyped on the internet now on Twitter. We're just too young. They didn't have the prequel. I, 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 I thought yeah. it was before, like, owned I by the Phantom Menace. Yeah. Over, I stayed awake all night outside of a movie theater to see Star Wars The yeah. Phantom Menace, and it was terrible. I wanted to do that, but my parents wouldn't let me. And then my parents were at the day The Phantom Menace came out. <laughs> the morning, they were at a like church thing where at a silent auction, my dad got two tickets to see The Phantom Menace that night at our downtown theater. And he and your like, mom went for like, <laughs> for like, like later, later kid who took a cigarette <laughs> at my face. <laughs> um, no, so I ended up seeing it that same and part of the, the fanfare. And, I, and I, but I was like, just old enough, like literally just old enough to go. This is bad. Yeah. Like this isn't good. You were older than me, so you could really do it. It was just a thing that I had just discovered that when you watched a movie, you yeah. could walk out and go. That was not good. Yeah. That was a, a new yeah, skill. For strange. Me. I have to, if I might, if I might, I had a very, very Rhode Island experience when I first saw Phantom Menace. When what, I went to the movie it? theater that night, the movie broke and we had to all be moved into a smaller theater that didn't have quite as many seats. And of course, this is a packed thing. I couldn't sit with my friend and some little dickhead who, sorry, a little jerk. You can say dick. You fucking, can't say dickhead here. The fucking dickhead <laughs> uh, was there with his mom, who thought this was <laughs> totally mom. fine. This is a dickhead's mom. Dickhead with his mom. He <laughs> spit in my hair, and I was really pissed off about it. And my mother <laughs> almost got into a fight with this other mother, like straight up, like yelling in each other's faces, like "Don't do that. You can't do that to my daughter." Like <sighs> full on, almost had a fight. A security guard came over and and kept the peace. But it was like a really Spit in your hair. Maybe he was just really upset about the movie too. He maybe he was, but he was like he was pissy because I sat in a seat Wait, and him. I got there first, and then he was mad because uh, he didn't get to sit with his friend or whatever. So he spit in my hair. Sorry, you call was, that a Yoda puppet? Yeah, <laughs> basically, maybe that's what was really going on. But Who's it was this very, Watto? Yeah, it was like the Watto fucking full experience in Rhode Island. Let me tell you. <laughs> like it was a full. Some this fuck, was a full Watto. Full okay. Watto. But that's that's <laughs> starting to sound. I don't. I don't even know what it sounds like. But yes, it was a very good. And that and that like I focused on that because you know when like if you're about to be in a fight 
uh, I don't know how many fights you've both been oh, in, but like if, really? if the fight situation is about to happen, you have adrenaline just like coursing through your blood and you're like, this kid spit in my hair. I'm going to get mad. I'm going to tell my mom. <laughs> That's they're gonna, I, I they're know what that get feels pissed like. Off. Like I was focused on that more than the movie. And like, I watched the movie and I was like, like that was kind of shitty. Oh, Star Wars so much. Your and adrenaline I, and just I loved takes Star over. Wars. Yeah. And it was just a very... That's all that, like, I remember seeing the movie and thinking it was kind of stupid, but I also just remember being, like, in fight or flight mode the entire time I was watching it, and then that happened, so. Honestly, probably better than if you were able Maybe. to just pay attention the whole time. Maybe, to be honest with you, yeah. But, anyway, yeah. whatever. Can we do some reader mail from you, the readers? Let's do it. Yeah. If you, the reader, have questions that you would like us to answer, or thoughts, or if you want to tell us your Phantom Menace experience, please write us at questions at idlethumbs.net. Make sure you put the Phantom Menace experience <laughs> in the subject heading. <laughs> and so you can... too could win a ticket to see the Phantom Menace on opening night. Oh. <laughs> no. We Chris Rama should... will personally accompany you <laughs> on the newly to... announced Han Solo backstory movie. Oh my God. You can watch the Phantom Menace at Chris's apartment in San Francisco, California. And he'll give full commentary in the voice of your choice from the movie. He'll be Evan Sleesbagano if you want him to be. He does an amazing Sebulba. <laughs> He's the, it's the full Watto Remo is what it is. Yeah, the full Watto experience. Um, <laughs> Jake, you'll be, do, you'll be right doing now. the reader mail. I will. It's me. I'm Chris Remo. Uh, Daniel Premo, a fake Chris Remo, writes uh, <laughs> voiced Lego games. This is just a, like, we were... We haven't played a lot of Lego games lately because we were shocked uh, that there were voice in Lego games. And he says, hi, Thumbs. I played many Lego video games, so I listened intently while you discussed Lego Jurassic World. You all sounded surprised that it used actual voice work. This is not a new thing. If I remember correctly, Lego Batman 2 was the first Lego, Lego game to use oh. recorded dialogue, and that was in June of 2012. So, woof to us. Lego they Lord had it in the Hobbit one. I, I yeah, Lego, Lord of, the, it, Lego yeah. Lord of the Rings, which he says is excellent, used some lines of dialogue lifted from the films. It was released in October 2012. Uh Hobbit had it too. Anyway, yeah. Thanks from Daniel in Atlanta. Thank you. Mizale M I S A E L J writes high thumbs desktop sims. Hearing you guys talk about her story this slash last week reminded me of another relatively modern desktop sim where you use a character's computer to uncover a mystery. Digital A Love Story by Christine Love oh, yeah. takes place in 1988 and has the player dial into various BBSs and begins to uncover a mystery. I thought the story was very enthralling, and I recommend it to people who have a love of desktop sims or the BBS era. It's also really well written. That's another. I've cool heard thing digital love it. story is great. That was in the IGF like yes, recently in the last ago, couple I years, yeah. couple years ago, and, and was nominated for um, enough things that I remember the lady saying digital a love story over by, and over again by Christine Love. Yeah. Oh. Um. So that's a good recommendation for that. Also, when talking about desktop sims. This is kind of the, I think, maybe the ultimate desktop sim is the upcoming Quadrilateral Cowboy by oh, Brennan Chung, yeah, because yeah. that is a desktop sim that includes nested desktop sims. Because in that game, you enter a, you, you are a first person character who sits down at a virtual reality headset and interacts with its interface to load up VR environments in which you set down a computer and type on it. <laughs> so, like, it's a two level deep desktop simulator actually, as far as we know its main menu is oh. actually also a desktop simulation oh shit of, so it's three levels of, deep of, as of far whatever as we the know. computer is that contains the game quadrilateral we know cowboy. it's at least three we're yeah. talking three boxes of creams of weed here yeah um <laughs> so that's not out yet obviously but that that could be the desktop simulator to end all desktop simulators um so this email also Impressive. says p.s did you all see that Super 3D Noah's Ark is now on Steam? Oh my god, that's right. I figured the quote classic PC gamer and Chris would appreciate it. Love the podcast, MJ. <gasps> yeah. Um, also, if you you should follow if you have at all any interest in game development, follow uh, at Blendo Games Brendan Chung's Twitter account because it's just a little glimpse into the mind of him having making this game over the past. I'm, I'm doing this right life, now. One he, years, one human years. life. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, really, he's a high quality follow on Twitter. I, I'm following him now. I'm looking right now. I'm going to probably pronounce his <laughs> name incorrectly. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but uh, Kunal Saujani writes Temple of Doom. Ugh. Hey, all. I'm one of the people who really likes Temple of Doom. We talked about how Temple of Doom was bad right. last week. Mm -hmm. I, I've known you guys for a long time. I know what that conversation was. It was very quick. Um, 
I look at it now, and it's clearly a little bit troubling in its depiction of the Hindu religion and people, but I can't discard it wholly either. My cultural background is Indian and a Hindu, uh, and Hindu, so my reaction to that film as a kid was less, man, I can't believe they're showing Indian people eating monkey brains, spoiler, but more, <laughs> wow, that baddie from the films my parents make me watch is in an English film, an enjoyment uh, of knowledge of the words they used, albeit not appreciating their abuse of those terms in the context of the time. The minecart was also a highlight. Um <laughs> The antagonist in Temple of Doom, uh, Amrish Puri, was a typecast antagonist in tons of Indian films and also stars in one of my favorite Indian films of all time, again, probably a hint of nostalgia, called Mr. India. <laughs> <laughs> the film is a musical about how, uh, how a guy runs an orphanage, finds his dad's secret invisibility watch, and how he fights a quasi-Indian Hitler slash Blofeld cross uh, who threatens to nuke India and is secretly contaminating food with stones what? thanks for a great podcast anyway oh good very unique temple of doom perspective yes that's a reader yes. mail yeah that's that a that hell is of a, a mail. hell of a reader mail. that's yeah. it right there that's a reader mail yep man you know i still have nightmares about temple of doom it's really strange yeah? i have recurring temple of doom nightmares i have a, like a are like you a, having your heart taken out or no something i have like a that, suite or? of nightmares oh is it the bugs no, it's actually the end hanging over the cliffs ah, with the alligators. Beneath. I see, I see. Yeah, that made an indelible impression. Yeah, Temple of Doom is, brain. is it's a movie really that cracked that nut. Yeah, I think I yeah. think Temple of Doom as a complete movie, I can't really get into. But every scene inside of Temple of Doom is really iconic and strange, and well, it has stays the, in it your It has brain. the most iconic Indiana Jones scene of all of them: the giant boulder. That's Raiders. Are you kidding me? Oh, you're right. That's Never mind. First 10 Sorry, minutes of- I get them confused. It's the very first 10 minutes of Raiders. Yeah. Wait, He's also running out of a crazy the, place at the beginning of Temple of Doom. Yeah. No, Temple of Doom is Club Obi-Wan. Hong Kong. It's the dance number in Hong, Hong Kong, Kong, and then the plane crashes. Oh, my God. You're right. Wow. It's funny because- Can I tell you a little secret? Yeah. I have not seen an Indiana Jones movie to completion in quite some time. It looks like I have to go watch Raiders right. again. <sighs> yeah, ra- We've talked. But about, I can tell you that ooh. we talked about Indiana Jones stuff a little you, bit. Uh, we've talked about it a lot on this podcast. A lot. A, lot, a thing a that lot. I just thought about though that I want to talk about for half a second. I is, wish I could delete having said the <laughs> thing on this podcast. It's fine. I'm very tired. Magic of editing. Uh, <laughs> It'll be in there. Temple of Doom. The, the way that I just described Temple of Doom a second ago is exactly how you would describe a story that was originally a series of one real serials that were stitched together. Oh, of mm. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is actually awesome. Except, so but it reminded me that it's. Like from a like ideological, like philosophical, theoretical standpoint, Temple of Doom is probably the truest to inspiration yes. Indiana Jones movie. Except that Raiders also is like that. It's just classic. It's just a lot better. Yeah. yeah. I uh, and Last Crusade is not like that because Last Crusade is just a sequel it's to just Raiders a family, of the Lost Ark. It's just a cool but, family. Um, but whatever. Movie. Yeah. That I just I realized that I accidentally, while saying it negatively, said why like I justified Temple of Doom myself. Um, <laughs> What we're talking about movies, you want to talk about movies? You want to close out with a movie? Let's do it. Or are you are you are you done? Are you melting in this in this summer recording? Melting in, in Chris's seat. You want to talk about robots? Did you guys like Ex Machina? Yes. Unsure. I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I knew I knew it. Oh, that makes me really happy that I knew it. Okay. Oh. I like a lot about it, but I don't know if I like it. I know. I really liked it. We did but we, it, we can agree. Did we talk about it? But it's on a this horror film. A little week? bit. A little but bit. It's but it's like, okay. Go for you it. You know what? Actually, because it's at the end of a podcast, readers, thanks so much. Our Twitter handle is at Idle Thumbs. Tell if you liked this podcast or any of them ever, please tell a friend. <laughs> it's the, really the only way we get new readers and allows us to keep doing the show as uh because yeah. Um so thank you. But please tell a friend. Rate us on iTunes. That would be great. We should thank our sponsor for this week. Zoom? Zoom. Yay. A uh, great, very robust, uh, well-considered video conferencing, screen sharing solution on a bunch of platforms. All platforms, pretty much. Yeah. Mac, PC, Android, iOS. You can go to zoom.us slash thumbs and get your account now. It's free. It's free. It's not going to make you it's ask cool. you to pay money unless you wanted all the crazy features. Um, they do. It, they really do it a good way. Yeah, we and use, we it, use it. We work. like it. Thanks, Zoom. Zoom. Yep. Zoom.us. Zoom. Zoom.us. Zoom. 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 Slash thumbs. thumbs. Enjoy Japan. Thank you. Konnichiwa or whatever. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, arigato yeah. or whatever. Arigato. Ichini Yeah. 
You're going to Osaka? Osaka, Kyoto, and Tokyo. You should have an uh, an Osaka readers meetup. Do we have readers in Osaka? We have to. If you are a reader in Osaka, Hit let me know. At Danielle Lurie. Danielle Lurie. On Twitter. D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E-R-I. Just in case. You don't really have to do that. I know. It's funny if you did. I know. You well, going to go to Disney Sea? Said I was going to leave 20 minutes ago. Might. Better. Might. I'm oh, hoping yeah, to. Disney I'm hoping to. Now we're going to talk about Ex Machina. We're going to spoil it, so thank you Let's if you haven't it. seen it and don't yeah. want to hear about it. Um, Good for us putting this at the end of the podcast. I know, we did yeah. it. We did it. We, finally, did it. Yeah. we finally didn't fuck it up. Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> sort of. Um, it's that's more complicated than that. <laughs> no, it's more spoiler. complicated. I know. <laughs> Sorry. I had, to, I had to do something terrible. Uh, it's a horror film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yes. Like, I like that about it. I love that it's a psychological thriller, futuristic sci-fi movie that's a tense interpersonal, like who's got the upper hand, what's actually going on here mystery, but at the end is a horror film. Mm-hmm. Is the beginning of the apocalypse. It's the best. It's the beginning of the apocalypse. There's also just a horror film for men, which is hilarious. To me. Oh, I didn't really <laughs> read the gender stuff into it as much. What? I mean, I know it's all Dude there. who wants to just bone a robot and thinks so they're going to run away together. All that stuff is just so the obvious. The last shot's him I... pounding on a glass door as the robot leaves to go live its life. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really. Yeah, sure. I love the gender stuff about it. I didn't dislike I the gender great. stuff in it at all, but I just didn't think of it as a horror. I didn't think of it as like a as like a like a screed or something. No, I it wasn't. I think it was more. You know, it was saying something about gender, but it was also saying a lot about. I mean, it had more to say about tech bro culture, certainly, but it was an indictment of tech bro culture from a woman's point of view. I thought. Yeah, I guess I could see that. I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, but I was like real. I didn't think Oscar Isaac deserved to die. Oh, what? Are you kidding me? Oh, I don't he, know. He did. But okay, I don't wait, know. Hold on, hold but on, I don't hold know on, about hold on. Caleb. You cannot say. You're he saying, was living in a crazy house going insane building robots. Right, but you say having, sentence one, it is a horror movie. Sentence two, I don't know if he deserves to die. The rules of just a horror movie are he dies. Yeah, I know, I know. It he was dies just, in the most insane it was robot thing because I felt kind of, I felt bad about everyone. I was like, well, that robot doesn't know what the fuck's going on. He was such on. a piece of shit. That robot yeah, knew sucks. exactly what was going but people on. Are, no, I just mean like in terms of like not killing people. Like, yeah. I mean, in terms oh, of no, that rules, robot knew exactly the rules of morality. <laughs> she knew exactly what she was doing. She, I don't she think she didn't I don't, have Asimov's three. I don't rules. think that I don't think that there is any you can't say that 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 robot does not know what it's doing when she just stared at this like dude who's kept her locked up in a house and build sex robots and just goes and yeah. kills him in the most calculated God, it's so way. Funny. Like my brain it's one of those movies where my brain was working doing so much overtime work mm-hmm. thinking about all the different angles and how it was going to end mm-hmm. that really like obvious imagery like really sort of grotesque shit that I had I like peel like teased away at all. Uh-huh. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. She's naked, whatever. It's fine. But what the fuck is going on? It, it was really funny, and I yeah. I liked the thing I liked about it is that I felt like I only saw half the movie because my brain was working so hard on the <laughs> other half. And I do feel like I need to watch it again to take the like the more like on their face messages. Yeah, no, just clearly. as a, yeah. as a weird unknown what is happening mystery that sort of is peeling back over time i think that it's i I don't know it was crazy because ultimately everything was bad it was all bad yes (laughs) everything was bad like (laughs) that robots is gonna kill people what i don't know about She's gonna see the beauty of the earth. And no, man. I think, she's gonna I kill think people. She, she had to kill I people. Like, I don't think she's fucking like T one thousand or whatever. <laughs> but like, my assumption. I don't think it's gonna turn into the Terminator. Man, that's. But like, that is so not my read on that movie. Really? My assumption. Oh, is, I was like, our robot's gonna start. Okay, people. okay. Maybe you're right. Just in that she, her freedom was that's obtained. That's the more interesting movie. For her me. freedom was obtained through murder. <laughs> but like. I had been assuming that she was just going to, like, go chill out in Times Square, st- all the money that she could steal from that guy, buy a nice apartment, and just be a person. That, yeah, I kind of really, figured that's that, read too. on the end? Yeah, why would she not? Like, the whole, like... Because people are awful. Because she's going to stand on that street corner and see a rape. 
And then sure. she's going to look, you okay. know? Okay. That's, that's fair. But, but I'm cool with because that. I'm like, oh, that robot is just going to cleanse the okay. earth that's of right. all the bad. So, <laughs> like, I see, I see what you're saying, and that's totally fair. Yeah. That is, so it's just, she will do what she intends to do, but then see that the situation she was in is not unique. And then it is actually just that the world is bad. The world is just a series of her people of, of objects and boxes. Yeah. It's going to be real dark. That's fair. So Mary in the black so, and uh, white room to you. I felt really, <laughs> yeah, I felt really like, bad about being alive at the end of that movie. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, so I didn't. I didn't assume immediately apocalypse, and I also. Oh, didn't, it's so nice. You think she gets like no? A, no like I didn't. A, I didn't literally like just a brownstone. Like, I didn't just. I didn't just assume like a happy life for that person. <laughs> but but I was going to make it. I assumed that there were my my expectation was you will just end up having like at best. A reasonably mundane life if you can adapt well but, but you're the right thing is she lives forever as long as she can find power yeah and like keep her like her her like her all her shit working her okay it would be cool Which if she, she proven becomes, she can do i mean it would just be cool if she becomes like she becomes batman but in a good way you know no, she, she's not gonna become sean's I, right i want no, her no, to no, become no, no, batman she, it's gonna be you can't become batman in a good way that's the whole point of Batman. I know. <laughs> Can she just become Wonder Woman? No. I like that. No, if you're just... a person who thinks that your job is to right wrongs by the only means that she seems to have been sh- well, she's gonna. So I would say this, right? The story of that robot then is that like the first chunk of all the, all the murders, we're all going to like generally be like, okay, yeah. Yeah, good, like, good. That was a piece of shit. Yeah, All right. right. Nice fucker. Then yeah. she gets the taste of blood. But then it's the gray <laughs> zone the murders. Vampire. It's the like, okay, like the moment she, what's she going to do when she meets like somebody who's like mentally handicapped and deserves to die in her eyes? Mm. Like where would he go there? Mm. All the giant questions that we struggle with as a, <laughs> as a sentient person. Here, here's Sorry, the I, thing. Thing. I was thinking, I went to the New York Times and my brain was like, what's the last crazy thing I fucking read that like, how do we do this? What do <laughs> this we do? This starts getting into self-driving car moral problems. Right. We talked about that on the podcast. Well, here, here's about that. Do I kill the motorcyclist or do I smash into the van full of orphan? Oh, no, orphans? it's not even that. It's do I kill you, the occupant of my car? Yeah. And save the school bus full of kids. Or do I save your life because you are my owner and I know that because of that that school bus is going to run into the center divide. Well, <laughs> wow. Like if it's Korean, I mean at one point an engineer has to start making these assessments, right? Like okay, if I am a car and I have a 100% certainty that I'm either going to hit right, what's the object moral code of a self driving car? B, and I, there are living creatures in object A or object B um, upon what data set do you make that decision oh do you well here's the here's a much bigger question do you think it's possible for her to to develop a sense of morality of of, of something we would call more or less decent morality from well, living th- in the world okay so she's only lived in this controlled con- the sh- environment the, the movie does presuppose that the answer to that question is yes that her programming is so good that she's able to develop at least, like, right, the, but, the pretending of but sympathy it, it, or it, empathy. It's strange, though, when you combine the different genres that it combines, because the story is, mm. is obviously told, it's told from the perspective of, of, like, derpy, young, fake Mark Zuckerberg and <laughs> Oscar Isaac as, like, ultimate, like, hulked out Mark Zuckerberg. Yes. Yeah, and, or, but, like, but, like, like from the Steve pers- Jobs. So, yeah, yeah but like, a yeah. way more bro Steve Jobs. Yeah, he's sure. like a he's like it's a, he's a, he's a startup like a startup Steve Jobs. He, it's so funny. I was like, oh, I like that he was just sort of like doing his. I don't know. I like that he had texture. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. oh yeah, but he, his his weird in, intensity. But the, but from the perspective of man, what is the name of the robot? Ava. Ava. Of, from Ava's perspective, this is basically like a classic, like female revenge movie. Like it's like like if the movie was told from her perspective, it would basically be right, yeah. like an old exploitation exploitation revenge movie like it would yeah. be a tarantino movie sure this is kill bill yeah it, yeah. yeah it's it, yeah um kill isaac yeah <laughs> so, but like thinking about Nathan. that His and sort of Nathan. where like because ah i don't know it makes it makes it i mean that's the thing that's amazing about the movie is that we're with um whatever the kid from the black mirror uh whatever oh, that caleb yeah. caleb his perspective of the whole time but he's the least interesting character in the movie in terms of 
the world, like in, in terms of the well, story I mean, that the, comes the, after. The twist right? of all of that is he's basically like he's just there to be stimulus for tool. this robot. Yeah, like, right, he's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think ultimately it doesn't end good. No, I think even if she develops, like, there's just no good path. Maybe I'm just being really pessimistic. Maybe like, that's okay, maybe it's, it's develop- more of a metaphor. This is kind of how yeah. a lot of people <laughs> that's why I think the are brought a horror up, film. and this is why that's like why I think the life kind of sucks. Film. There's no good thing that comes out of it. Because but even if she does develop morals and empathy um, by living in the world of people, she's going to live forever. She might not, or she'll get found out as forever. a robot. And yeah. neither of those outcomes are yeah. going to be good for and her. We all saw what happened to that uh, ro- that robot in AI. <sighs> I actually didn't see what happened to that robot in AI. You didn't, I didn't miss see a lot. that movie. I didn't see Haley Joe. Man Made Moon really likes it. Duncan Jones is a big fan. He was tweeting about it this week. Anyway, Duncan Jones likes all sorts of. Good yeah, he things. does. He, he's a smart dude. I I I don't know. Uh, I read this movie as a very feminist movie, like very very much so. Like where the men are, you know, originally presented as like. You know, these are the main characters. This is who you pay attention to. This is sort of what's mm-hmm. going on. And then it, it ends up being actually this is about the story of a woman's freedom and like actually breaking completely out and violently out. And I have mixed feelings about sort of like the only scene that actually didn't work for me as a scene in a movie where I was watching and 100 percent in it was actually sort of the murder scene because I, I thought it like it went a little cheese ball there for me like with the music with the like, you know, the, the sort of like, oh, it was a murder. Riff, it wasn't kind of like, like it was just you know the slow motion stabbing yeah. i was a little bit like well that's the thing that's right. interesting about that is because like it wasn't just about her getting her freedom because her freedom would have been achieved with the first stabbing and then she, she turns around and she stabs right. again right so i'm like oh god she's, she's <laughs> you know? pissed yeah 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 but I, I mean i yeah i think I, it's a I, really interesting movie yes. i think it was really really well it's made and it was really well written by, especially yeah, yeah alex garland's like a smart person yeah um I, and I and I yeah. do, even though I thought it was a, a pretty cool feminist movie, or like that was my read on it, at least my take mm-hmm. on it. I I did still even feel a little bit bad for Caleb. I felt like yeah. he he's not, you know, he's, Say, he's, how dare you? He's a nice guy. He's exactly the quote unquote nice guy on the internet. But I don't know that he necessarily deserved to die. Like that right, was one of those things. It's like okay, she could have like... trapped him in the house where he probably has food forever and will be okay and like alive. And it was not necessary. It was necessary to keep him from bothering her. It was necessary to trap him. It's yeah. probably not necessary to actually like sentence him to death in one room. That was maybe not the coolest thing for Ava to have done. <laughs> but yeah, but I liked Ava. I was, yeah, no, I was 100% I like that there was for Ava. no good and there was no good yeah, character I did in too. the movie. Like I like she was his daughter in in every way. Like he, she was the product of Nathan, who is an amoral asshole. Like you know. So I what I hope is that she, you know, that's she, she, she daughter, watches except that, except that he built his daughter to have sex with? Yeah, yeah see, he that's have, he's a creepy fucker. Like he, he sucks. He never had sex with Ava. If he, he didn't, talked about her vagina once. If yeah, he didn't have sex with her, he was planning it. on it. If she was, de- oh, if really? the new Probably. model was built, all those other robots are just his previous releases, fuck toys, yeah, that are just now in a little like menagerie yeah. of naked boob ladies in his yeah. in his yeah, that was bedroom. He's, he's creepy. That was an interesting choice because I think that the movie could have done without that and still been really interesting. Yeah, like I actually think the movie's more interesting if that stuff isn't in the movie. It, it sort of added to the. Female it, revenge no, fantasy it does thing. Feel like a, the, yeah, it yeah. is a female revenge fantasy movie then, for sure. This episode has become very strange. I think we can probably chop this down. <laughs> probably not. No one cares. All right. It's it's good. It was good. There was no cruft. This was the opposite of the ex Machina <laughs> script. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All cruft all the time. Yeah. The only non cruft in this entire episode was the ads and Welcome to Idle Thumbs 218 in our names. <laughs> <laughs> the objective. Could have lost the names. No one cares. That's true. Thank you for listening to that huge spoiler section, all of you who watched this. This has been Idle Thumbs Movie Hour. Yeah. That it was might have fun. Been Jake and Danielle. Wanielle Ariendo. I had to make sure I got my name in there, but that was the first one I said. That's all right. It was Wanielle. Wanielle Ariendo. Wanielle Ariendo. See you guys next week.